What is going on guys with Morton here bring guys a brand new type of video. A video that I've never quite done before. Y'all know I love Bush Gardens Williamsburg and in many of my bios, I call myself the unofficial resident of Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Well, this type of video is meant to expand upon that and give me the ability to talk more about the part that I love in an avenue that's not vlogs. So I can really just sit down and really just think through my thoughts and really explain it in my own words. I was inspired by YouTuber Offhand Disney. I just went to Disney a few weeks ago and there's just so much in the park, so much history, so many Easter eggs, so many stories that I really wanted to dive in. And hearing those stories, really, I was just invested in Disney. I started watching these Disney movies, like my letterbox is filled with like new Disney cartoon movies that otherwise I would just wouldn't have watched. Those videos had just made me want to learn more. I thought maybe YouTube needs someone who will be a patriot for Busch Gardens Williamsburg in the same way Offhand Disney is just such an advocate for Disney. I want to kind of touch on a topic today that's kind of weird. And also with these videos, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see my beautiful beautiful face as much because these are going to be more of those videos where I talk over clips that I lay, clips that I've taken or clips that I grab from the internet that help me tell the story so you can visualize it a little bit better than me just talking about it. And some of you are like, this is very podcast style. What happened to the Sweet Talking Podcast? Don't worry. The Sweet Talking Podcast is going nowhere. It's still just as alive, just on a bit of a hiatus, getting some things figured out, some things built, some would say. And once that is completed. The podcast will be back, hopefully weekly, but it's going to be a little bit of time. It's going to be a little bit of time. So just, just give some time while we get our stuff together and the podcast will be back. But this is a new style video that I hope to do more regularly if you guys enjoy. So if you enjoyed this following video, make sure to subscribe down below, like this video, and comment down below if you want me to continue. All right. Can Bush Gardens be bigger than Disney World? No. And also, I... You know, we're kind of using Disney because they're more the name that everyone is more familiar with. Let's not forget the other big resort parks in the world, Universal. They are just as much a part of this argument. I'm going to use Disney more as the example. But for a closer comparison of parks, of like the uh, potential, I say Universal because they're more into the high thrill that I think Busch Gardens is closer to. But for the sake of IP and just familiarity with everything, I'm going to use the Disney parks. But just know that when I say Disney, you can switch out Universal. It would be the same argument. So, the question is, why is Disney and Universal so big? It's the IP content. They also have content that goes back to the 1930s with Steamboat Willie, Mickey, Snow White. All the characters building over the years with Pixar and the acquisitions of Marvel and Star Wars and Fox. All these companies and the success of their own cartoon animation studio. The moral of the story is Disney has a lot of content. So does Universal. Universal owns the theme park rights to Harry Potter while also fully owning the IP such as Nintendo for their parks, the Dominions, King Kong, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, whichever one you would like to call it, Fast and Furious, The Simpsons theme park rights, Transformers. So they have a lot of IP based content. That's why they are so successful because they have money coming in from those projects, from the TV shows, from the movies, from the comics, just any piece of content that they could make over the past almost 100 years. And that's why they're so successful. They already had a big business before they built a park. The park just enhanced it. The park is just a humongous marquee for these IP to flourish among the general public. You know, this is IP that is so much integrated into the cultural zeitgeist. You don't typically go a day in the world without hearing at least a reference to either a Disney IP or a Universal IP, but definitely a Disney IP. You're probably thinking, then why even have the conversation, can Busch Gardens be as big or bigger than either of the parks? You, you idiot. You're honestly an idiot. I don't know what's, I don't know what's wrong with you. And I don't think it's as crazy of an argument as you think, because what I've been saying the whole time, IP-based content. And we're going to use a couple rides, for example, here, specifically from Disney, which are uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise, and Haunted Mansion. Now, what do all these rides have in common? I may have missed some, but we're going to start with these. What do all these have in common? There is a movie based off of all of them. Now, are they all successful? No. The Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, one of the top franchise in cinematic history. Jungle Cruise, what I've heard, I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard it's a, just a, it's just a fun movie. There's nothing like too special to it. The Haunted Mansion, I know they did one back with Eddie Murphy. The new one that they're about to come out with looks really cool, really 
I'm a big horror movie buff, and to see Disney kind of do a horror take is interesting, so I'm excited for it. It looks cool. But w again, we're, we've gone this far, but we hadn't really talked about Busch Gardens. But the point I'm bringing up with those rides are, those rides are more popular now because of the IP those rides inspired. At least for Pirates of the Caribbean. That's the probably the one that, that you can definitely use as that. In 2008, Busch Gardens was acquired by SeaWorld. And I can do a whole video talking about that if you guys want to, about why that happened. We all know how SeaWorld is great at taking care of their money. Not. There's a lot of potential there. SeaWorld definitely, I feel like, is always in a trying to heal the image of the brand. And now there's only a few film studios that Disney does not have under their wing, which are like Sony, Paramount, and Warner Brothers. So we have to pick one of those that we're going to roll with. So I'm going to say Warner Brothers. So let's say... Hypothetically, Warner Brothers or SeaWorld reach out to each other and we're, they're like, we want to be more competitive with Disney Universal. How can we do that? You hand over movie rights to IP based off of what SeaWorld has created. And the reason I say Busch Gardens Williamsburg in particular is because if you look at SeaWorld's lineup of parks, Busch Gardens lends the hand to having the biggest possible IP potential of all the parks with rides like Griffin, Verbolton, even historic ones like Dragonfire, Curse of Dark Castle, Invader, Loch Ness Monster. There's so much potential for stories to be told that if SeaWorld wanted to start this venture, you would start with Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now, SeaWorld might want to go at their own parks because, you know, SeaWorld would like to start with SeaWorld and put SeaWorld on the highest pedestal. But if you look at the history of how they dealt with their parks, aside from the SeaWorld parks themselves, Busch Gardens Williamsburg in particular gets a lot of love. I know Tampa just got Iron Gwazi, I know, but just hold tight for Williamsburg, okay? Just hold tight. But if you think about it, like, which park has some more hybrid rides? Which park has the bigger world-class rides? Williamsburg. And if you want to compare Tampa and Williamsburg together, think of it like this. Tampa came first. Disneyland came first. They're both essentially in a street corner. They don't really have all the space in the world. They're kind of limited in space. Disney World is like Busch Gardens Williamsburg. They came after the former, but they're bigger with more land that they can expand upon, which gives them more integration with the natural world. Busch Gardens has the potential to be as big as Disney, I think. It would not happen soon. Even if the deal happened tomorrow and they started working on a script, it would take years because the cultural zeitgeist has to kind of drift and they have to find a way to force themselves in with the other huge IP outside of Disney and Universal. But I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And I think you start here. I think you start here. So let's say Warner Brothers and SeaWorld signs a deal. They want to make movies. Where do you start? I think it's on a silver platter. And I think you go with a ride that actually doesn't exist anymore. I think you go with Curse at Our Castle. Because A, there's already a story written there. There's already a story that people that have been to the park, at least in the past 15 years, are familiar with. There's so much content. You can make a whole full-length movie based off the first version of the ride. And Busch Gardens owns the IP. I think they split the IP with Falcon Creative Group. I think they could have the pool where they could get the uh, movie rights to it should they want it. And then, let's say the movie's successful. Let's say it's a box office hit. Then you got a sequel with Dark Coaster, which is now the the ride that is taking Dark Castle's building. So there, you got a franchise right there. You got a, you got a movie and a sequel, and you could potentially go on for the third one should you want to. And other rides that I would consider would be in the first batch, or if you want to go into MCU or Disney way to like to say it, the phases. If you want to talk about what else you could do in phase one is Griffin. I think that would be a fantastic one. Of course, Loch Ness Monster. I mean, that one's just like on a silver platter. It's also the, one of the oldest rides at the park. So I think that'd be really great to integrate with the history of the park. And I think for Bolton, I think that if you look at those and Alpen Guys too, and I think also there's so many genres that they can go with these stories. I think you can go action with Curse at Our Castle. I think you can go horror with like Alpen Guys. You can go medieval sci fi with Griffin, super action adventure, sci fi, horror, anywhere with Verbolton. You could even make like a racing movie out of it. Actually, I'm gonna save the racing idea for another day. There's potential that I'm working on the stories for what those films would be because one day I would love to pitch those. If I could. So what would need to happen for them to even have that potential? The only reason Disney and Universal are as big is that they're creating this with the IP and their ability to integrate the IP. So really it would be not just upon 
getting a movie deal right between Warner Brothers and SeaWorld, or let's say a movie studio in SeaWorld, but it had to be success at the box office, success with the general audience and the general public. And what this means for Busch Gardens is the money that Disney gets is from all the merchandise and toys and everything based around the movies in addition to the movies. What Busch Gardens would need to do and what would be the best thing out of, for Busch Gardens out of this whole thing and it's really the whole point of this whole entire argument, theming. Busch Gardens Williamsburg is the world's most beautiful theme park for so many years in a row. But one thing that they started to lack on recently due to the budget that they are given from SeaWorld is theming. I think Pantheon is the biggest advocate for that point because we all remember the concept trailer pre-pandemic that had all the Roman columns and everything. And what's it now? Not Roman columns. Just a few stones and a lot of wooden boards because Busch Gardens Williamsburg loves wooden planks. Looking at you, Invader. And there's just so many potential to expand upon theming that's already there. Like Griffin, you had the beautiful theming right when you walk in. But let's expand that and make that more of the entirety of the lane. Loch Ness Monster, they really lend themselves to have some good moments, but they just need to expand upon it. And for Bolton, for Bolton, I think we could remain untouched for history with theming. I think theirs is pretty solid. Same with Dark Coaster, because they already had the existing building, and I like the new theming in there. I think they could do a little bit more, but I like it. So, well, why the reason I pick Bush Gardens is because, like I said, there's so many stories to tell with the rides that are already there. I think there's definitely the base for real, genuine, successful IP already in the park. So, if SeaWorld was like, we want to expand, we want to make more money, we want to become more integrated with the general audience and the cultural zeitgeist. I think you start with Busch Gardens Williamsburg. It's also in the historic, one of the historic capitals of the world. So you're drawing more people to what's already a big tourist place in addition to Orlando and California where Disney parks and Universal parks are. You get a new spot. You get a new spot that's your own. And if you can draw people there, that's your own. You're not battling like Disney has to battle Universal. You got your own spot. Because if they did this, the only other part that Busch Gardens Williamsburg in particular has to battle is King's Dominion. And to be fair, it's not much of a battle. And if they did this, there is no more battle. Busch Gardens Williamsburg blows King's Dominion out of the water. And I would honestly say it's already like that now. And that's without the movie base IP. And plus, I just think it'd be really cool. You hear the engineers at Busch Gardens talk about the stories of all these rides, but we really don't get to visualize them with the budget that they have for theming. And I think if you had this deal you can we can see these stories fleshed out in a brand new way and then take what's successful from that film and bring it over into the park and you and the money the size of bush gardens can just get bigger we could get more countries we could get more land more theming you know kind of go back to the old country really embrace the spirit of the old country go back to that and i think that's what this would do this is all hypothetical speaking, but I really wanted to make a splash with my first video with this and talk about a controversial topic of how could anyone be as big as Disney and Universal Parks or as their IP in general. But it's just so much underlying IP potential there that I think they could do, they could make so much content and make so much money and make so much more theming. And the more of this whole video is, I want Bush Garden Swings for having more of a theming budget. That's the reason behind this video. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you had already. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure that bell button down below so you're notified every single time I put a, br a brand new video to the channel. I'm sorry, writing those scripts. Let me know if you guys want this video to stay around. The type of video me talking about Bush Gardens, Williamsburg in different ways because I have so many things I can talk about. I love this park with my whole entire being. So if you are interested, make sure to subscribe. Go check out my other Bush Gardens, Williamsburg videos. And my name is Will Morris, and I'm out. I'm so oblivious, oblivious Whenever she passes by